pronouns. <laughs> All right, folks, Sega Sonic fan back. And uh, the headphone port and speakers are now fully working on this MacBook. It's all repaired, though it did turn out to be more involved than I thought, especially when I'm being distracted by funny animal videos. Yeah. Anyway, if I take here this little portable speaker, <laughs> now that's an amplified speaker, so if I turn down the volume it won't be clipping. Misty, blink once if you're Hitler. Oh my god! I'm so sleepy, I'm this is so ridiculous. Get that out of here! Take a little cat nap and I think get that shit out of here! So yeah, enough of that amazing distraction. Um, it's all working now. I'm going to go ahead, shut this off, and show you the circuit board and what I did to repair it. So actually... You got this, Travis. Make him wait for it. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead and shut that down. And uh, give you a little look here. Um, yeah, this repair was kind of a pain. Not going to lie. It was a little more involved than I had thought. Um, actually, I'm gonna set the camera down for a sec, and maybe I can I can juggle here. Ugh. So, what was going on? Well, we had a couple things. So, one is, like I mentioned in part one of this video, it's the second video, but in part one. I mentioned that this chip, U6700, was missing. U6700 is a multiplexer, and all it does is switch between line and headphone output, basically. So if you're doing a line input, you're inputting an audio signal. If you're outputting, then you're going to your headphones. You have your two COM points and your no connection, or sorry, normally closed, normally open. So by bridging, these two connections uh, across, I was able to, ugh, sorry, this camera is just not, oh, it's so shaky, I'm sorry. But by bridging those two connections, I uh, bypassed this missing chip rather than having to replace it. It's a BGA, I didn't want to wait for shipping and do all that. Um, just way more work than I wanted to do. Um, I could have done it, but just too much more work. Uh, so I just bypassed that and the computer no longer accepts a line in for whatever, which I'm okay with. Uh, I went ahead and because the jack was broken as well, you had three issues going on here, the jack was, was broken, so I went ahead and dis uh, removed R6805, which is this resistor right here. Um, and that that is for the SPDIF because it was locked in SPDIF output mode. So it no longer does digital optical output. But it works as speakers and headphones, which is really all people need. Uh, it's all I need. And so, yeah, you had those two issues. So on top of that, there was a third issue, and this is the one that was the most annoying. Um, and I'll show you something first. Is If you look down here, there's written rather not in the greatest place. Um, and it should have been copied over in the other page. But it says... This is this is oh just so annoying, not not great data sheet work here. G P I O zero equals zero. G P I O one equals one. Then you have your headphone path selected for the what we're jumping here, right? And if it's the other way, then it's line in selected. Okay, why they couldn't just put line in and headphones? I don't know. I mean, they abbreviated everything, but it's even worse. Is these G P I O signals are actually not the same as what they are. I don't know, it's very confusing. You have to kind of jump around and look at things. Jump up, jump up and get down. Uh, basically, your GPIOs um, are actually these two right here, GPIO1 and GPIO2. Um, and here it's explained, headphone amp control, analog switch control. And so I had to check these GPIO pins and see what was going on uh, to make sure those were being output properly by U6201 to make sure that it's even in headphone mode. Um, I could have taken this for granted. I could have just kind of assumed this because the in the OS itself it said headphone mode. 
So, I, you know, I guess I could have bypassed that and just taken that. But you do want to check your enable pins, so I don't know. I don't know what the right, if that was the right thing to do or not. But anyway, I did check it out. It checked out fine. Okay. So then what? Well, then you got to check your headphone output, right? Um, the actual signal. So I checked these two signals right here going into the headphone amp, which is this chip, U6500, um, which is actually a pretty cool little chip. It's an MAX9724. I looked at the data sheet and yep, you know, the enable signal, which comes in here for GPIO for the shutdown pin was high. So that was all good. Um, but the two amp inputs were not good. Those were low. Um, so I was like, what the heck's going on with that? Well, the plot thickens. Plot thickens. Turns out there is this resistor network. Um, so it comes out of your, your main codec, goes through these two resistors, and one of the resistors is, is tied from the bridge to the input. So if you have a problem with your output, you're also going to have a problem with your input. Ah, oh, that's frustrating. And looked around some more, went back up to the codec chip, and actually measured it from the output of the chip itself before those resistors. So I measured it from these two points right here, pins 38 and 40. And 38 and 40, guess what? I was getting an AC audio signal when I was, you know, when I plugged into the port. So that's a good sign. That means that your main audio codec is outputting the analog audio signal. It's just not making it to the headphone jack and it's not getting amplified. But the amplifier is enabled, so why is that? Well, as it turns out, kids, boys and girls, the power rail to the chip had been blown off the board. Uh, I have no idea how that happened. Um, whoever I got this board from um, probably was trying to fix this and saw the power was blown off here. And rather than trying to fix that, or maybe they didn't see it, who knows, um, they went ahead and just removed our, our multiplexer chip, um, which may or may not have been causing the short, though I think it was probably water damage since this board already had water damage. So I had to run a very, very fine wire. I had to scrape away at the chip. Let's see if I can even point this out. Let me remove the battery first. Never remove the battery with metal, by the way. Uh, Lewis Rossman's got a video on that, but it's also just kind of obvious. Um, so if you can see it here, it's pretty damn small. But, yeah, you probably can't make it out on this camera, but there is a wire running from this capacitor to that pin. It's the third one over, because that's your audio amp, and that's that's where it was blown. So yeah, audio works now. This laptop is fully working aside from the digital optical output and the line-in support, which I don't care about. So if you also don't care about those things, then hopefully this video will be useful to you so you can actually get regular headphone functionality and speaker functionality again out of your MacBook. Uh, fun little hack, jumping that, uh, that multiplexer. Have fun uh, doing your repairs. This is Sega Sonic Fan, signing out.